Hey everyone, and welcome back to Open Solar. My name's Christian, and today I'll be just taking us through this control zone at the bottom right here um, and setting that up. So do note this control zone is only for the administrators of the account. So those that have created the account or those that will be doing the setup for that business. Another very important thing to note about this control zone is that it will impact all of these other sections here. So it impacts all of the projects that you're going to create in the future, um, whereas these Project Studio and My NG Zones only relate to one project at a time. We'll start up here in the top left hand corner in the company section. We can go into business info to enter some basic information about our business here. We can put in our color highlight, so we can um, select a, a color that suits um, the business's color palette. And then we can put in some about us content in here. And this will show nicely on the proposal. You can see here I've added a nice image, which can be done using this icon at the top of the text editor. Finally, just chuck in your logo at the bottom here, and then you can hit save. Moving on, let's jump into this team section where we can add in all of our team members. So you can see here I've got a nice list of my team members, and you can put in their contact details in there as well, which will then show on the proposal too. You can add them in by clicking create, putting in their email address here and their name. And then if you want to make them an admin, which gives them access to this control zone that we're in now, you can switch this one on here. Then you can just hit save and they'll get an invite to join the organization. Something I'll just note quickly about team members here. You can see some have admin access and some not. Um, you have the option within the settings tab here to restrict the project access control. And that means that the team members will only be able to see projects that they get assigned to in OpenSolar. Um, and, and you assign the team members to projects in this project zone when you're in the specific job. All right, so just moving on from the company tab, let's jump into pricing and payments now. So if we go into system pricing, we'll be able to see a list of our pricing schemes. You can see here I've got a range of different schemes from fixed price, price per watt, markup percentage, um, and you can create these by clicking create, selecting a pricing formula, and then adding in um, the necessary information required here. I'll just speak quickly um, about these pricing schemes. So obviously we're setting these up in the control zone, but then we would apply these pricing schemes to the projects in the studio zone when we're doing our solar design. So the way they work, a fixed price will obviously just take a fixed price and this is best used for standard system packages like the 6.6 .6 kilowatt system I've got here. Um, a price per watt scheme will obviously base it off the size of the system. So when we're designing in studio, the price per watt will automatically make the calculations based on the size of the system and the size of the battery and then give us a price from that. The markup percentage will mark up based on the cost information that we've entered in. And so the cost information can be found in this tab here, which I'll run through in a moment. Um, and it will also take the cost from the hardware that we're using in that job in this section here, which I'll also run through shortly. So this is um, a good way if you want to mark up on all of the costs that you have for your business and for that project. Great, so that's how the pricing schemes work. Now jumping into the payment options, similarly set up here, but also applied in the studio zone down here. So you can see I've got a loan option um, and a few cash options as well there. So you can set these up pretty simply by clicking create and then selecting your type of payment option here. If I go with the cash option for an example, I can auto apply this um, just like I can as well with pricing schemes. And this will um, set this payment option uh, for all future projects if I want to do that or I can leave it switched off manually select it each time in the studio zone So I can put in a deposit uh, Percentage if I wish here um, or even just put in a deposit minimum or maximum and you also have a few options um, Within the advanced settings to add supplementary T's and C's and so on So I'll let you explore that um, a little bit yourself now just jumping into this cost information section in here we can set a, um, a cost list. I've got this um, default cost list here. Um, you can create one just by clicking this button here. Let's just call it commercial cost as, a, as an example here. And we can um, leave it off the default because maybe we'll mostly be doing residential jobs. So we can hit save. 
And now we've created this commercial cost list and in here I can open up the COGS tab and enter in various costs on a per system, per panel or per watt basis. And you'll notice um, depending on where you are, I'm based in Australia, we have a few default costs set here in Open Solar for you, just as a, as a rough guide that you can use in there. But feel free to change these as you wish. So all of these um, costs will then be applied and calculated in the studio zone. Okay, great. We'll now move through to the design and hardware section. In here you have all of your um, modules, inverters, batteries and other components that you'll be using in your solar design. So I'm in this modules tab um, and the way you can add in modules to, into this active list is by clicking create, searching for the manufacturer up here, I will just take LG again as a quick example, selecting your panel from our database there, you can then see the specifications that I've got here um, and you can put in your cost of goods sold, so the buying price um, for that panel. And this is really handy if you want to um, use that markup scheme. It will take into account $200 in this case um, per panel. So when you're designing in studio, you've got 20 panels, it will times that 20 by $200 to calculate into the markup scheme. So I've already got that one added into my list there actually. Um, but the same process applies for inverters um, and batteries as well here. So clicking create um, and then searching for the manufacturer and selecting from our database. You'll notice that some products have brands like uh, FEMA, LG Chem, Iguana and Powerwall here and they are exhibited products on Open Solar. Um, so they are paid partners and you'll have access to nice branding, imagery, spec sheets and so on in your My Energy proposals when you're using these exhibited products here. You can also add in other components um, and some of these might be racking systems, some of them might be optimizers and things like that, or you can even just attach um, costs that you want to to the job. So I've just got an admin cost in here, I've also got a travel charge for 30 minutes um, and I've attached a $50 cost to that travel charge. So once again, all of these are applied to the design in the studio zone. Now let's just jump into the purchase experience. Um, everything in this purchase experience tab relates to the end customer. So the proposal template um, is what the My Energy page will look like at the end of the day. I have this residential template and we've also got a commercial one. Um, you can see the residential is the default so that's applying to all future jobs. And I can go in there and edit it. Um, I can really rearrange everything within these proposal settings. I can switch off some items and switch on others. I can uh, set my cover page welcome message in here. And I can also change up some of the proposal content that appears um, through the quote in this proposal content tab. I can set up my terms and conditions very quickly in this contract template area by clicking create here and then I can copy and paste them into the text box that pops up there and you probably want to auto apply that one as well. And lastly just this checkout experience um, is upon the quote acceptance when they go through to click accept quote um, you can enable checkout to allow this um, and you can also choose to accept credit card via Stripe and you can also accept an offline payment as well there. So offline payment, I've put in some bank detail information here to make that deposit. Guys, always remembering to click save when you make any progress through this control zone. Alrighty guys, and just one last thing I wanted to note here is within this other section. So within here, um, two important areas are this lead capture forms area. Um, so Open Solar supports automatic integration of leads generated through the lead capture form directly into the Open Solar platform. You can customize the form's parameters and generate code snippet on Open Solar. The code can be integrated to either your company's website or blog. While the process to integrate is simple, it needs some knowledge of web development um, and access to hosting as well. So I won't dive into too much detail here um, right now, but you can just check out our Help Center article how to generate a lead capture form um, and that will run you through the process and then how to integrate that into your website or blog. And lastly is just this area on document templates. So within OpenSolar you can generate various different types of documents that pull information from specific projects. Uh, you can see here 
I've got an energy yield report, an installation instructions, and an owner's manual, and you can create these quickly by clicking Create Document Template and selecting that type. So I've just taken the generic ones that we offer in OpenSolar, um, and the way that you can generate these documents for those projects are if you go into the project zone and you come down to a section near the bottom called files here, you can click generate file and then you can select that document template uh, from this list here. So you'll have these as the default that you can generate and I'll just give you a quick preview. So this is the installation instructions. You know, you've got some customer information, site information, site details, and the panel and inverter configuration with the components. Um, so that's nice and handy to pass over to the installer to do the job. And you can also generate an energy yield report, as I've got here, um, which breaks down the system parameters in this nice table here to check out. Um, and one as well is the owner's manual, um, which I won't bother diving into now, but you can also generate that manual to pass straight over to the owner of the solar system. I think that pretty much wraps up um, some of the key setup features for this control zone today. If you have any other questions, please dive into our help center in here. The training package is super useful. We've made lots of great videos in there. And there's also um, a further deep dive into the control zone within webinar number three here, happening every single Thursday afternoon. So do check out these webinars for additional training as well, followed by a Q&A session. Cool. Thanks very much uh, for tuning into this video and hoping you have a great day.